Hey everybody, my name is Tom Tullis. This is the Tomb of 3D Printed Horrors. And today we're going to take a look at Bamboo Labs' new A1 Mini 3D Printer. Now, before we get started here, um, if you would, please click that like and subscribe button. That really does help me with the YouTube algorithm. Uh, YouTube uh, does not promote small creators like myself like they used to. And uh, clicking the like and subscribe button, and uh, if you have time, leave a quick comment. Those really do a lot to boost this channel in the algorithm and get it promoted uh, and in front of more people and get me more views. So if you like what I do here, if these videos help you out, please consider helping me out in return and just doing those three things. Now, um, Bamboo A1 Mini uh, up front. Bamboo Lab did send me a printer for review, but I liked it so much after just a few days of printing, I bought another one with my own money. So I want to make sure you understand that uh, Bamboo Lab has not seen this video until after I posted it. They had no input with it, and I was not beholden to them to give you know a glowing review or anything. I put my money where my mouth is and bought an A1 Mini uh, on my own. Um, right up front, this is the best 3D printer I have ever used. Um, you can get this the base level printer for $299 or for $459 you can get with the multicolor AMS unit. You really do not need that for printing tabletop minis and terrain. The $299 base unit will do fine and that's what I bought for myself. Um, We'll get into some of the features of the hot swapping of the or the quick swapping of the nozzles and print samples in a minute. But uh, let me just go over some of the specs of this. Um, this is a this has a roughly seven inch by seven inch print bed. Now that sounds a little small, but if you look at it here, um, this can fit nine dungeon tiles on it. So that's quite a bit. And the best part is it'll print nine tiles in about 13 hours, 13 and a half hours. So yeah. that is incredibly fast, so much faster than say an Ender 3. It's just mind boggling. Now, what makes this printer so much better than everything else out there? Well, for $299, you are getting um, really some groundbreaking uh, features on this and nobody else on the market can touch it for this price. Um, to start with you've got active flow rate compensation. Now what that is is like if you have an Ender 3 you can calibrate the e-steps for the extruder motor. You know it could turn so many times to extruder, extrude or feed a certain length of filament. Okay we all know about that. I've done videos on how to do it but just because you feed a certain amount or a certain volume of solid filament into the melt chamber, that is in no way guaranteeing that an identical amount of melted filament comes out the nozzle, okay? When that filament melts, it expands, it applies more pressure. How much filament comes out the nozzle is determined by how much pressure is in that melt chamber. So just because you feed a certain length or certain volume into the melt chamber, that is no guarantee that an identical amount comes out. Now, what active flow rate compensation is doing um, is it's monitoring that. And in the firmware's algorithm, it's determining um, how much is being fed in and how it should compensate that feed rate to ensure the amount of filament coming out the nozzle is consistent, is what it's looking for. Now, um, if you've ever printed super fast and on your ender or anything else, and you turn corners, a tight corner, if you're printing a square, those corners can bulge on you. That is the exact type of thing that this uh, flow rate compensation will eliminate. If it uh, determines you're going to change a corner like that or turn a corner, it will decrease the amount of filament coming out so you don't get those bulges. So in other 3D printers where you experience um, inconsistent extrusion, this is going to, for the most part, eliminate that. So it is a very important feature to have. Now, another thing I really love about this printer is it has active vibration compensation. That's just another way uh, of saying it has input shaping, uh, which you find on Clipper and things like that. Um, 
but essentially what it's doing is the printer is canceling its own vibrations which creates better print quality the faster you print the more vibrations you have so the ability to cancel that out keeps your surface quality on your prints looking really nice so that vibration compensation combined with the active flow rate compensation really produces some stunning results and it allows this printer to print many times faster than most other printers on the market and maintain the same or higher level of quality. Now, some other really nice things on this is it does have auto bed leveling. It has Z auto uh, Z offset. Um, probably my favorite feature on this printer is the fast nozzle swap, and I'm going to show you that in a few minutes. But it can be done with the uh, nozzle not heated which is much safer especially if you're going looking for a printer to buy for your kids this is the way to go it's a much safer uh, operation to swap the nozzles out uh, nozzle changes take less than a minute so it's very very fast and there is no wiring in the area of the nozzle that can be damaged and create a fire hazard like you would have uh, say on a Ender 3 or something, you have to be very careful with the thermistor and the heater cartridge wires that go into the heating block. This does not have that. The nozzle is completely separate. It's held in place with a magnet and two clips. Uh, so if you are getting this for your kids, this is a much, much safer printer for them to operate. Okay, all of that aside, the real question is how does it print? And I can tell you this is the best 3D printer I've ever worked with. And I started out with Ultimaker, I've worked with printer bots, Prusa's, Creality. The print quality on this is amazing. And the best part is with these fast nozzle swaps, you're getting two printers in one. You're going to be able to go from printing terrain, and with a one minute nozzle swap, you can be set up to print miniatures. Print a few miniatures swap the nozzles again less than a minute you're back to printing terrain so this is an incredibly versatile printer um, if I'm gonna if I take my Ender 3 V2 and I want to swap the nozzle out to go from miniatures to terrain it's gonna take me 20 minutes or maybe even half an hour depending and I risk damaging the wiring and everything to do that um, this printer you have none of those issues less than a minute you're swapped out and you can print larger things or smaller things now let's take a look at the nozzle swaps. The first thing you're going to do is press that lever on the right that uh, cuts your filament. You're then going to take the front cover plate off. This is just pressure fit. There's no screws. Once that's off, you're going to need to take off the silicon uh, insulation sock. That's a little bit of a tight fit, so I like to use needle nose pliers for it. Once that is off, you can actually get in and remove the nozzle. Now the nozzle is held in place with two gate clips, one on the left, one on the right. A magnet holds it in place. So once you get those two gate clips open, you're just going to firmly grip the nozzle and pull it out. That's it. There's no screws. You don't need a socket wrench or anything like that. It's just the magnet and the two gate clips. The new nozzle just slides into place. Close the two gate clips over it and reinstall your silicon sock. Now this sock is a little bit of a tight fit because of the uh, cooling fan duct work. It has really great cooling on this machine but um, it does fit a little bit tight there so just be patient with that and then snap your cover plate back in place and your nozzle is swapped out. That's it. Now one um, thing I did have an issue with on this machine is my cabling there uh, would get snagged on the top cap of the, that z-axis post um, and it snapped pretty hard one time so I just made this 3d printable cap that has a slope on it uh, it is linked in the video description it's free for you to download and print out and that'll keep that from happening the other thing I did for my machine was I just added a full-size SD card adapter. This machine accepts micro SDs and I hate dealing with those. So I just put a large SD adapter on it. Okay, the question on everybody's mind, how does it print? Oh, we'll start with miniatures here. Uh, it can produce a standard uh, 28 millimeter mini. This Barbarian printed in an hour 41 minutes at 0 0.08 layer height. And as you can see, it is absolutely smooth. You have to get this thing under magnification to see the layer lines, but it is absolutely gorgeous. 
This is done with some custom profile settings I'm developing. I will release those in about a week with my next video that is specifically on printing miniatures with the Bamboo Mini A1. Uh, this is done with Hatchbox at 0 0.08 layer height. Um, if you are going to do miniatures, you do need to order a 0.2 millimeter nozzle from Bamboo Lab. It's only 12 bucks, but it's worth every penny. This miniature I did with Sunlu's new Meta PLA at 0 0.06 layer height in my custom settings. And we'll take a look at this here and blow it up a little bit. Um, as you can see, the layer lines are barely perceptible, and this has blown up considerably what you're seeing on your screen. Uh, the new Sunlu Meta PLA with my custom settings and uh, a 0.2 millimeter nozzle, and this machine is producing prints that look almost like they were done with a resin printer. And um, as you can see from this photo, that's not hyperbole. It really is producing uh, miniatures this detailed and this smooth. And the quality is just blowing me away. For $300, you can get a machine that will do both miniatures and terrain all in one. And all it's going to cost you is an extra $12 for a secondary miniature nozzle, a 0.2 nozzle. The 0.4 millimeter nozzle will not do this quality. And I'll show more on that in my miniatures video. Um, if you want to do this, you've got to buy the $12 nozzle. Um, here is a blow up again at 0 0.06 layer height. Uh, 0 0.06 has a little bit more stringing. Nothing major, nothing you can't clean up in about 30 seconds with an X-Acto knife or a quick blast from a heat gun. Uh, it's just that the layers are so thin, they curl a little bit, and so it pulls off and creates a slight strand. But uh, again, very, very smooth, very, very good, and I think you will be extremely happy with this printer. Now, next up, let's take a look at Terrain. Uh, as you can see here, it can fit nine 2x2 two two dungeon tiles on the bed, so that is nothing to scoff at. I know it's called the A1 Mini, but you actually can fit quite a bit uh, of stuff on that bed. It prints very, very fast. And the best part is Bamboo Studio offers you a way to selectively change layer heights. And that's what I'm going to show you here. The one on the left is done at 02 millimeter layer height. Uh, for the entire print and as you can see that that tile surface the ground is very rough the tile on the right is printed with the selective adaptive layers and I'm gonna do a whole video I'm almost done with it it'll come out in another week or so on that on how to do terrain um, and you can see that is very very smooth there is a huge difference here between the two and the best part is the time difference is very little if you print just at 0.2, it's going to take an hour and 41. Uh, if you print with the selective adaptive layers, it just bumps it to an hour 58, and I am working on getting this even faster. But for uh, roughly a 17 minute or a little less increase in print time, you are getting a significant increase in surface quality. So again, this printer is very versatile. And I will be doing a recommended settings video for terrain coming up here in the next couple of weeks. So, final thoughts on this. Um, I cannot recommend this printer highly enough. Uh, if you're just starting out, get this printer. It is so frustration free. It is virtually ready to go out of the box. All you are doing is installing a single tube and bolting on a spool holder. So, you know, you can be up and running in five minutes with this printer. If you are an experienced printer or just looking for something else to add to your collection of printers, you really can't go wrong with this. As you've seen, the bed is not that small. Nine dungeon tiles is quite a bit. If you're looking to do FDM minis, this is, again, the way to go. Get the $299 printer, buy the $12 nozzle, and you are up and ready. Um, I will have a dedicated miniatures video with my custom profiles coming in another week or so, so keep an eye out for that. If you are considering buying this, um, I do have an affiliate link in the video description and on my website. If you would consider using that, it does kick a couple of dollars uh, my way to help support this channel. Finally, I'm going to reiterate if you can, please click that like and subscribe button and leave a comment and help me out with the YouTube algorithm. Um, it really does help the channel considerably and I really do appreciate it. 
So, thank you for watching, and I will get another video on the Bamboo Lab out in about a week. Thank you.